We love traveling and driving along over the years, we've towed a number of various combinations of caravan and tent and trailer. And as I drive on the highway, I look at some of those caravans and I remember back to those days of family and they beg. And uh, I know it's going to something wonderful and exciting and it's gonna be a holiday. But I've passed so much of that and I thought, well, do I really want to tow such a big caravan? And to that end, my wife and I recently bought ourselves a Vagabond Teardrop uh, Rogue. And this little caravan is just a master of everything we've asked it to do. We took it on a trip recently to see this Vagabond in action and to try and test it in a number of environments. A little bit of off-road, a little bit of gravel, a bit of tar, overnight stops, couple of night stays and that sort of thing. And man, it came up trumps in every one of them. We set off from Clarence and as we went through the little village of Clarence, we were getting ourselves ready and our seats comfortable. And even at that stage, one forgot that you're towing this little caravan behind you. We traveled through to Bloemfontein and we spent the first night at a camp on the banks of a river, a camp called Durangbos. What a beautiful night. It was just the two of us there listening to a lion roar across the river. And our little caravan just for a one-nighter was perfect. It was there, it had everything available and minimal getting ready, which was great. The next day we traveled and got onto the N6 heading down to the Eastern Cape. And what condition that road is in, it's absolutely magnificent. And sitting on the highway, cruising at a comfortable cruising speed, 110 kilometers an hour. Again, the caravan sat there like a well-behaved puppy. We went to Alibal North and we spent the night at a beautiful old farmhouse first bit of off-road there we were, where we got to test our little vagabond to some extent and there were ruts there was a lot of mud uh, it had been raining just before and getting to the farmhouse we had to go to four-wheel drive and a little bit of low range here and there and once again the caravan it answered every question we could throw at it we had a beautiful night woke up to an icy cold crisp morning and we got back onto the highway traveling all the way down to east london in East London, we tested it for the first time with a night, a couple of nights stay. And we went to Yellow Sands and we had a caravan site to dream of. It had the most magnificent views of the Indian Ocean, the trees, the condition of the camp, everything was absolutely lovely. Did the vagabond draw attention? Oh yes. The number of people who came over saying, oh, can we come and have a look? Can we see inside? Where does this go? Oh, look at that kitchen. Gosh, it's got wonderful clearance. And we proudly sat there with our new little vagabond, showing everybody exactly what it could do. How was it for a couple of nights stay? Did we miss the big caravan? Not in the least. We were as comfortable as anything. That bed slept, they let us sleep beautifully. And our kitchen, our, our entertainment area, everything worked beautifully. After East London and a four night stay at Yellow Sands, we got back onto the highway again and we went through to that, that most magnificent of our national parks, Storms River Mouth. And we camped at Storms River Mouth nervously. We had a couple of experiences there before where we've been hit by winds and storms that we couldn't cope with. We got the most magnificent sight right on the seafront with the power of those waves thundering mere meters away from us. And the little vagabond looked at home there as much as anywhere else. And from there, after two nights at uh, Storms River Mouth, we headed off to the Bavians Clough, which was to become the first real off-road test that we wanted to put this little van through. And we did. We, stepped, we spent a couple of nights at a camp called Cedar Falls, where we put the caravan away and wrapped it up in cotton wool while we went off into the mountains to do a four-day hike. And after that, we said farewell to the rest of the party as they all headed home and we carried on into the Babianskloof. Uh, Travelling through the Babianskloof, our first night was at Durenkloof. And again, we were the only campers in the park. But getting there was a 25 kilometer road of stark, incredible, absolute beauty. We had gone through Nivakluf to get to Cedar Falls and one just looks at it and has to think of the beauty that surrounds us. Durenkluf didn't let us down either. On the banks of a little dam, we had a bra that night, which for whatever reason we did what we usually do, but it turned into one of those bras that was memorable for all the right reasons. Just wonderful. Just the two of us 
Africa at its most beautiful and a bride. What else does a South African need? We were a little nervous to head on through the conservancy section of the Bavi Arms Kloof. I had spoken to a ranger who had said there's been a lot of water, Smith's crawl could be a challenge and the road is not good. So we decided to, to take the chickens route and we went back out of the Bavi Arms Kloof toward Uniondale and we got onto Route 62 and went all the way around and came in at uh, Potensi. We were told later that it would have taken us the same time to have got through Bavi Arms Kloof. We camped at Ranky's Kroll, where we met up with a couple of other vagabonders and we had our first small official vagabond gathering at Ranky's Kroll, right on the river. And on the second day, Fiona and I decided to go into the Bavians Kloof to have a look at whether it earned and deserves the reputation that it has. We drove through from the Potensi side all the way to Smith's Kroll, where we stopped and had lunch. And coming back, we were only in the Hilux, we didn't take the Vagabond with us. And the Hilux coped admirably. And as I look at the road, the, the Ranger was right. It, uh, it wasn't in good condition and there was a lot of water. Would the Vagabond have made it? Oh yes. Oh yes, it would have made it. Would my nerves have made it? Probably not. A massive drop off to the left or to the right. Less than a single lane corners where you don't know what's coming toward you. So having chickened out, we felt we had taken the right decision and it was all right. We know that the Vagabond would have made it through that trip, but I'm very pleased that we didn't ask it to. From there, at the end of that weekend at Branky's Kroll, Fiona got a flight up to Johannesburg and I travelled home alone and had the opportunity to feel what it would be like for a, a one-night camp uh, and, and one person on their own and putting up the awning and using the kitchen. And I stopped off at the most wonderful little campsite just outside Craddock. And I spent a night there where I didn't even bother to unhitch the Vagabond. I left it hitched to the back of the car and I had a, a wonderful night, a one-man bry, again listening to the sounds of nature and every comfort we could ask for in the Vagabond. The next day I carried on through to Bloemfontein again and at times I thought to myself, can it get any easier than this? At the beginning when I spoke about not wanting to tow a big caravan, could I be as comfortable in a small caravan? Oh yes. Is it as easy as a rooftop tent? Oh yes, even easier. You're carrying your tent and it's ready to sleep in when you get there. Is it more comfortable than any of those tents? Oh yes. Do you have all the facilities? Yes, we do. So in looking back at this vagabond in action, do we regret having gone so small? Do we have any concerns about towing such a small caravan? Not at all. We only have delight in knowing that we have every function we could want when camping and going off-road and experiencing our country. And we are not taking anything along with us that we don't need at all. The vagabond in action, I don't think it can be beaten.